What's a roji? Roji. Hi. This is an alley. Perfect. An alleyway. Nice. It starts with ro. What did it end with? Roji. Perfect. Can you read this for me? Komu. 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 Do you know what komu meant? Komu. Now, how does the enter kanji? Oh, um, yes. to enter? Kind of. Specifically, it kind of means like to cramp oneself into something a little bit. That's how it's like a little bit different. But this is what tends to be used in compound verbs to mean to enter, to go in in some way. Hmm. So compound verbs is something we saw earlier today, but basically all what does happens is that we get two verbs or sometimes a verb and a noun, and you just kameha and combine them together. Um, and what happens is that about, I would say 90%, maybe 85% of Japanese verbs, their compound verbs are pretty literal, um, with a couple of them being more metaphorical. Um, like yomi ageru, which comes from yomu to read, and ageru to raise, like to raise your voice, becomes to read out loud. Or yomu to read and hajimeru to start becomes yomi hajimeru to begin reading. Or hashiru to run, kata the way of becomes hashiri kata, the way of running, the way you're running. So nageru, which was to flow, and komu, which is to go in to can be combined into nagare komu. What do you think this means, nagare komu? Nagare komu. To go, or rather, to go while moving around. No, to go while flowing. Hmm, kind of. A lot of times with um, verbs like komu, which are very common mm. as a compound, these are kind of just like extra. They're not our main point. So nagare is our main point here, which is flowing. So we're going to flow into something. Nagare komu. So komu is adding into to the sentence. So in English, we're just, we, we, we literally won't flow into. We got two separate words right here. I got flow plus into. In Japanese, this is one word. Nagare komu. So komu is super common. You'll see this a lot to add into meanings to things like tobi komu. Tobu is to fly. Tobu becomes tobi komu. Um, sometimes tobu also has like a jumping meaning. So tobi komu means to fly into something or to jump into something. So the main part is the tobu, right here. Just so we got here, the main part is the nagaru, and we're just adding into to it. So it's kind of like a helping verb in that case. What did this alleyway end with? Roji. Perfect. Can you read the sentence? Can you read the sentence for me? Kawa kara kiri ga nagare komu roji. Any guesses what this might mean? So, so this is an example of a relative clause. So we're just this 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 sentence right here is a big mm. ass adjective. Oh. Relative clause is uh, another word for that is actually adjectival clause because it is a sentence that is playing pretending to be an adjective. In English, these are marked by that or who. Um, so that would make more sense here because we use that the most often in English, but who is more grammatically correct for like if this was like a name. Um, but all this means is that this sentence is describing a noun, which is doji alleyway. Okay. So, what do we know about this alleyway? Nagare komu. So, nagare komu. It flows into kiriga. Flows into the fog from the river. So, the fog that flows from the river is a, or is describing the alleyway. Mm-hmm. Just going into the alleyway. Yes, the fog that flows from the river is going into the alleyway. Or the alleyway that fog from the river flows into would be how this would be translated into English. So the alleyway. 
And then we'd have like a little comma right here that fog from the river flows into and comma. And then we'd like continue the sentence describing the alleyway. The alleyway is big, right? So our main sentence here is the alleyway is big. That's like our goal. Our alleyway is big. And we decided to specify about the alleyway using a sentence. The alleyway that the fog flows into is big. So in English, it's kind of confusing. We The clause ends with like normally a breath being taken and begins with that. Mm. In Japanese, it's a little bit confusing when a clause starts, but it ends when you see a verb like this in short form. That's how you know it's going to be a relative clause. So if this was in te form, then we know it's not a relative clause. If it's in ta form, then it is a relative clause. If it's an e, like nai, then it's a relative clause. Mm -hmm. And if it's um, stem form, it is not a relative clause. So that's what marks that this is an adjective. Um, what is alleyway? How do you say that word again? That was roji. Perfect. How about this word? Do you want to read this guy? It it was dim kanji. So so. Dim dim. Shows up in makura na yoru. Ah, kura kura yami. Yep, kura yami. So dim plus darkness is basically a way to say super darkness. Um. So right here, we're saying dark times two, right? <laughs> times three, maybe. Um. Can you read this for me? <clears throat> Roji wa makurayami. So, it's super dim. Yeah, what is super dim? And what's describing? It, the alleyway. The alleyway, the alleyway is, super, is dim. super dim. Perfect. Uh, now we're back here to Toyu, where we started this morning with. Toyu is using fine words, defining. So, kon, Toyu, dorobo, is kon that is a thief. Or we're talking about a Pacific thief. That is called con. Can you read this sentence for me? Hiri ga nagare komu roji wa makura yami. So right here, you can see a very good example of a relative clause right here being used to describe a noun. So if we were going to translate this, you start with the subject, read the relative clause, and fly all the way down here to the end of the sentence. Hmm. So the alleyway roji nagare kumu flows into from kiri the kiri the fog. Always pay attention. Fog to that article. flows into. Yep. Ah, uh, got. So there's no intent. So the fog flows into the alleyway. And then kuriyami, super dim. What is super dim? Kuriyami. What is super dim? The alleyway. Correct. So if I were to translate this into English, I would say the alleyway that, because that is English relative clause mar marker, the alleyway that fog flows into is totally super duper black. Mm. So, because it's right here, it's a relative clause. And those are marked by that in English. The other way that fog flows into is completely dark. How would you say a magician known as Khan? Using Toyu, a magician known as defining Khan as a magician. So it's like Khan defined as magician. Khan Toyu, Majitsushi. Perfect. So something else this defining can be used is getting this category and repeating it twice. Can you read this for me? This is D. Perfect. So literally this is to define defining a thief as a thief, which literally is thieves. Thieves that are thieves to mean all thieves. Because remember plurality is insinuated in Japanese. So since 
this right here is our category and we're repeating it twice. We know we're talking about thieves that you would call thieves. So anybody that you would call a thief, that's what we're talking about right here as our subject. So we probably just would say all thieves in English, but literally this is, if you would define it as a thief, then that's what we're talking about. Does that kind of make sense? We're talking about things yeah. that are defined as thieves. And next, kusum. You'll normally see it in past tense as kusunda to mean to be dark. So kusum is mm. will be dark, right? Kusum will be dark. Kusunda is dark. Kusum. Right. Um, can you read the sentence down here for me? Ajutsushi no poketo kara nisunda. Perfect. So right here, we saw very similar to sentences earlier, but I changed this into a relative clause. So that means we want to start the translation way over here. And then this is describing that. So use that after you say this noun. Such. Adoseki. So the magical rock that that, that what tense is this sentence? Hi. Which is to become dark? Hmm. Nusum? Is that dark or was kusum to become dark? Nusum? Hmm. Let's look at that kanji. Look at that kanji. Okay. So we have a plate. And then we say next. So you're so hungry, you wanted another plate, mm. so you stole it. You stole another so, plate. So, so Sunda. the magical stone that was stolen. Stolen from the pocket of the Majutsushi. The Perfect. So now I want you to say fog that is dark. That is marking a relative clause. How would you say that? So kusumu is dark and kusunda is is dark. So kusumu will be dark. Kusunda is dark. Mm. Fog that is dark. How would you say that? Fog oh, that is dark. Kiri kusunda. That's a good guess. This is wrong. Okay. <laughs> Why? So first of all, you need to always have a particle if you're going to end a sentence with a verb. And there's a noun, right? Ver verbs mm -hmm. and nouns do not touch in the front. That is weird. They can touch in the back end, sure. But the front ends should not be touching. That is gross. You know, yeah. they, they have cooties on the front end. So you need to have that bodyguard in between them, which would be ga in this context. Because... Kiriga kusunda is the fog is dark. Do you have any idea how we could rearrange this sentence and so that we have a verb that turned into an adjective? How could you turn the verb into an adjective right here to describe the noun kiri? Hmm. We could do kiri ga sunai. No, that's not right. So you're not so, so in adjectives, where do adjectives go in Japanese? What if I wanted to say kuroi, which is black, <laughs> and I wanted to add that to kiri? What what would I do? How would it I would add be, these together? So it would be right before it would be like shiroi no or shiroi kiri. Yes, shiroi kiri. So with this information, I think adjectives. Go before the nouns. So, so. so knowing that, how would I turn a verb mm. into an adjective? It would be. I bring the kusunda. Kusunda. Kiri. Kiri. Perfect. You did it. <laughs> ah. Kusunda, kusunda kiri. kiri. And don't think too hard. <laughs> that that's all you had to do. Oops. And now this, this verb right here is now an adjective. It is describing kiri. 
And this is allowed because kasunda is in short form. Short form means pa form, dictionary form, or negative form. Those three forms mm -hmm. are ta form. So kusume could go there, or kusumanai, or kusumanakata. All of these are short form. So you could say fog that is not dark, fog that was not dark, and fog that will be dark, and fog that is dark. These are all perfect examples of verbs pretending to be adjectives. Okay. okay, and next is that, how would you say flows from the river? How would you say that? Flows from the river. Flows from the river. So this is, would be normal. So the verb should go at the end of the sentence. Mm. So in the end, we would have river, which is kawa. Kawa. Then before that, we would have flows from. So nagareru. And then from. Nagareru kara. Kawa. So these are really good guesses right here, but from is really weird. Um, from likes to stick to what it's attached to. From is attached to a river. Um, hey. So nagareru kawa kara means um, the flowing river from. But if I did say kiri ga oh. nagareru kawa kara, this would probably, this would actually be okay. This would be the fog flows. The river, from the river that the fog flows is what this is in English. Mm -hmm. which is pretty fancy right there from the river that fog flows sounds very poetic <laughs> so it? what i wanted you was just to make a normal sentence here which would have been kawa kara kawa kara nagareru yep. Just, just the default oh. sentence. Kawakara nagareru. No relative flaws here. I didn't ask you to make an adjective. But this mm -hmm. would be the adjective. This is just good. But as I said, that sounds kind of poetic right there. <laughs> from the river that fog flows. But I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. flowing from the river. Hi. Um. So, oh yeah, I'm gonna go back. Do, 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 do. So now we have two sentences, basically. Well, not sentences. We have... um. Kusunda kiri, fog mm -hmm. that flows, and we have kawakara nagareru. Any guesses how we could combine these together? Um, mm -hmm. I want nagareru to be at the end. So we're going to end with nagareru. Good. Hi. Feel free to do whatever else you think could happen. Make this into one sentence. All you have to do is combine things and add one particle. There's a particle missing from this. One particle. Mm -hmm. Where does that particle go? My hint is that the sentence is fog that flow that is dark flows from the river is the English sentence. So what do you think is doing mm -hmm. the flowing? The flowing. So it would be kawakara. Kusunda. Um, kiri. And then nagareru. Yeah, how do what what particle do we need here to combine kiri to nagareru? All right, go. Yes, ga. Perfect. This is correct. Nice. So this is fog that is dark flows from the river. And as a fun thing, little right here, this this kata could be here, or it could be over here in this little area. I want to scribble right there. Both locations are mm -hmm. grammatically correct. Um, it just depends on where you want to put stuff. There is no difference in meaning between kara kara kusunda kiriga nagareru and kusunda kiriga kawa kara nagareru. Um, in the book, it does actually follow the order you specifically put it in. So perhaps oh. it's a more poetic version. Okay, 
So I think this will be our last sentence. Can you read this for me? Hi. That is alleyway. So, so. Alleyway was roji. Yep. Hi. Roji to you. Roji wa kureami. Perfect. So. so right here, we this is also mm. a relative clause, but has the role of defining. What is this saying? So. So alleyway of alleyways. All alleyways. Yes. Hi. Or what? Uh, all alleyways are with emphasis uh Makuriyami super dim. Yep. All alleyways are super dim. This wa right here is actually subject wa. Subject. Oh. Um so that you can tell because this doesn't have a verb. I mean the, it's a it, it it depends on like what what this ends with whether or not that's the subject because in English alleyways are dark. Alleyways I'm... is the subject. So if this said roji to you roji ga makurayami, then ga would be marking a subject, and then suddenly we're super being we're, we're being emphasizing right here. <laughs> to some extent, this is a slightly dramaticish way to refer to alleyways. Like you mind like you could say zembu no. Roji would also be a way to say all Zen, alleyways, I, right? Because Zenbu is all. Um, so mm. literally this is, if you would call it an alleyway, then that alleyway would be completely dark. Could be like kind of showing how like Toyu is kind of being used more poetically, perhaps more. Uh, it, it's 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 fun. It's not boring, basically. <laughs> Hi. Hi. And that is where we're going to drop for, stop for the day. Um, any questions mm -hmm. before we go? Nope, that's good. Cool. Then I'll see you in two weeks from now. Bye. Hi, hi. Bye-bye.